So liberal sexism is just a one-way street where women are always the victims and men, the patriarchy, are always the perpetrators. And to fight back against this massive masculine conspiracy, some women have united together in the name of feminism, which in the past did have a legitimate purpose, but as time went on, has morphed into an angry mob of misfits who blame men for all of the world's problems. Feminism can be broken down into four different waves. The first wave started in the early 1900s and involved the right to vote, women's suffrage. The second wave continued to dismantle the legal inequalities in the 1960s, and then by the 1990s, what's known as the third wave had lost its focus since there were no real goals that needed to be accomplished anymore in order to establish equality in America. But that didn't stop them from trying to do something. The fourth wave of feminism, which is the current incarnation, started around 2012 when social media became a huge part of our lives, connecting fat, ugly, crazy women from different parts of the country through the internet so that they could hang out together in delusional online echo chambers and come up with new causes to fight for since they're too intellectual weak to have any real hobbies and too emotionally abrasive to have boyfriends. Their social media campaigns kept getting more insane with no real purpose other than to shock people and get them some attention. Like the Shout Your Status campaign, which was started on Twitter, where mental illness is always celebrated, in which feminists began publicly admitting to having various sexually transmitted diseases as a way to reduce the stigma of having one. They were embraced by other radical progressives who called the campaign amazing and encouraged more women to come out of the STD closet. These same whack jobs promote free bleeding, which is the practice of women not wearing any tampons or pads during their period to help raise awareness for periods, as if we're not already painfully aware of them. Not to mention promoting abortions as cool and even prostitution as a legitimate profession. Liberals want your sons to do drag queen shows and your daughters to be literal prostitutes, or at least sell their own nudes through their OnlyFans accounts to creepy losers online who pay them for their attention. And since radical feminists are miserable people, they're trying to make everyone else as miserable as them, and they won't stop nagging about the things that us normal people do to enjoy our lives. Like grilling up some burgers or brats, or God forbid some steaks on the weekend. That, they say, perpetuates sexism and toxic masculinity. A supposed man who writes for the London Guardian gripe that grilling out is, quote, a biologically deterministic blizzard of BS that sees women as salad spinners and men as the keepers of the grill, the tenders of the flame, the lords and masters of the meat. He was obviously raised by a single mother and had no father figure in his life and is just spiteful of how guys who were raised properly enjoy grilling burgers or anything really. Heck, I've even grilled pizzas and he's also too dumb to look up how to use a grill on YouTube because there are plenty of videos for that if you don't know how. His article went on to complain that grilling is dominated by men and that he had no idea why. <laughs> well, it's because for thousands of years, men ventured out into the wild to hunt for protein and then came back to the camp and cooked it while the women watched after the children so they wouldn't stumble into the fire, moron. And normal people like to keep some of the traditions that our ancestors developed because it's part of the human experience and by dividing up the necessary activities to get through life, men and women can work in concert together to make it more enjoyable for everyone. After a group of college kids put up a funny and entertaining ad on Craigslist, look to hire a barbecue dad for an afternoon of grilling out them, feminists were upset because it was a harsh reminder of how gender roles become the star of the stage during a barbecue. The ad said that they were looking for an older fatherly figure to join them to talk about dad things like lawnmowers and building your own deck, all while drinking beer. But a group of college guys aren't allowed to enjoy the tradition of grilling out with each other anymore without feminists on the internet trying to ruin it. A male feminist, who's obviously gay, wrote an article for Slate, an online waste of cyberspace, about how he's conflicted about being a feminist and liking to grill. I hate how much I like to grill, it starts. It's not that I'm inclined to vegetarianism or that I otherwise object to the practice itself, but I'm uncomfortable with the pleasure I take in something so conventionally masculine. Looming over the coals, tongs in hand, I feel estranged from myself, recast in the role of a suburban dad. At such moments, I get the sense that I've fallen into a societal trap, one that reaffirms gender roles I've spent years trying to undo. The whole business feels retrograde, a relic of some earlier, less inclusive era. <laughs> there are countless feminists who complain about this on their blogs and on Twitter since they don't have any actually friends to listen to them. So they spend their time worrying about how it's perpetuating harmful gender stereotypes. But it's not just grilling meat that's a problem, simply eating it is. They say it perpetuates hegemonic masculinity and praise veganism for helping 
drive social change. And don't even get me started about how the globalists want us to eat bugs instead of meat to help supposedly reduce carbon emissions from industrial farming. Feminists are always complaining about the patriarchy, which means that throughout history, men tend to hold positions of power in society. And there's a reason for that. But like most facts, liberals don't want to hear about it. In his historic analysis of human mating behavior, the evolution of desire, evolutionary biologist David Buss explains, quote, a startling consequence of sexual strategies, for example, is that men's dominant control of resources worldwide can be traced in part to women's preference in choosing a mate. These preferences, operating repeatedly over thousands of generations, have led women to favor men who possess status and resources and to disfavor men who lack these assets. Ancestral men who failed to acquire such resources failed to attract women as mates. What this means is that the primary reason men strive to achieve positions of power and status in society is because women are hardwired to be attracted to those kinds of things. Buss explains, quote, women's preference for a successful, ambitious, and resourceful mate and men's competitive mating strategies evolved together. These strategies include risk-taking, status striving, derogation, meaning insulting competitors, coalition formation, and an array of individual efforts aimed at besting other men on the dimensions that women desire. The intertwining of these co-evolved mechanisms in men and women created the conditions for men to dominate in the domain of resources. So the women who complain about men ruling the world and dominating positions of power in society don't understand that we only strive towards those goals in order to impress women. It's in our DNA. At least it was until the soy or food additives or bisphenol A and plastic water bottles or something started feminizing millions of men and now half the people on TikTok can't even figure out what gender they are. And the same feminists who complain about this social inequality and about the wage gap, which is a long debunked myth, also ignore the fact that men often work dangerous and dirty jobs that expose us to enormous safety risks and health hazards. Not to mention men doing backbreaking manual labor that isn't just physically exhausting, but over time wears out parts of our bodies. Jobs like roofing, pouring concrete, brick laying, tree trimming, road construction, etc. Feminists also overlook other facts like men accounting for 92% of workplace deaths because of these dangerous jobs. Not to mention 97% of combat deaths are men fighting in the military. Feminists claim that they want equality in the workplace and whine about there not being enough women in certain industries while ignoring the fact that men are happy to work dangerous and dirty jobs so that women won't have to. I detail all this in my book, Liberalism Find a Cure, which you should order in paperback from Amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores, Kindle, iBooks, Nook, or Google Play. If you like my monologues, you'll really love my books. So head on over to Amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>